Hello, fictional. Welcome to the What If Issei. Today we are gonna see, What If Issei was the Dragon God Got Harem with Kateria Leviathan. Part 4. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribe, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Why? Even now you refuse to hand me the throne. And now it has resulted in the downfall of your kingdom. Shouted a knight in full armor, this knight was currently up against another knight of similar skill, maybe even greater. I am aware that my actions may have doomed my kingdom, but the answer to why I didn't give you the throne is simple spoke the other knight, whose blonde hair and emerald eyes were visible to the world, unlike the knight's opponent who was covered in full armor. The knight as full armor tightened his grip on the sword he was wielding, he was eagerly awaiting the answer of his opponent. It is because you do not have the capacity of a king. Stated the knight, also king of this land which has yet to be named. After hearing these words the knight in full armor unleashed a powerful battle cry and charged at the king with all his might. But even as the two clashed, the battle would end in the deaths of their armies, and inevitably their own as well. At some point in the fight, the king was able to catch the knight off guard and was able to land a hit on the knight's chest, causing major damage. Blood spewed out and the knight coughed out blood, but the king would give no time to recover, as he quickly sprung forward and impaled the knight with the spear he wielded, Rongominiot. The knight coughed out even more blood and could feel himself barely clinging to life. With his final breath he swung his demonic sword, Clarent and much to his convenience, he was able to impale the king in his abdomen. The king flinched but did not cough out any blood, or more accurately, he refused to cough out any blood. As the knight felt his knees getting weak, and with all his remaining strength he looked his king straight in the eye. Father uttered the knight before falling to the ground, on top the countless corpses of their armies. The king turned around and began walking away into the forest, due to the knight's sword, Clarent, impaling him, he would die very soon as well. The knight struggled to even move any of his body, but he managed to remove his helmet and gaze at the sky for one last time. As the sky breeze brushed on the knight's revealed beautiful face, blonde hair tied into a small ponytail and emerald eyes similar to his father, the knight reached out into the sky with his arm. If only someone more competent than my own father ruled over me. Thought the knight before closing his eyes, accepting his fate and awaiting the arrival of death. But before death could take the knight, the sound of water began surrounding the area around the knight, the knight's eyes opened in shock as he was now surrounded by streaks of water. The knight tilted his face and looked to his right, he could see a person watching him with his arms crossed. He was about to ask for the fellow's name, before the streaks of water began sticking on the wounds of the knight, the knight was about to try and defend himself, until he noticed that the pain was slowly going away. It then occurred to him that he was being healed. Soon enough all of the pain vanished, and the knight was able to stand up properly. As he stood up he turned and faced the man who healed him, the man had blue hair and Atlantic blue orbs for his eyes. Who are you? Asked the knight cautiously. The man chuckled and approached the knight, the knight narrowed his eyes in suspicion, but felt no ill intention from the man, so he let the blue-haired man approach him. I must say it is an honor to meet one of the famed knights of the round table. Spoke the blue-haired man. And to answer your question, I am known as Leviathan. Answered Leviathan with a grin present in his face. An unusual name, but I am not one to judge said the knight, earning a chuckle from Leviathan. But I must ask why would you heal me, of all the knights in the battlefield? Asked the knight curiously. I'm not too sure myself, ha ha ha. Replied Leviathan, earning a deadpan stare from the knight. But I have to say, I certainly did not expect a girl out of all that ridiculous armor. Laughed Leviathan, before dodging a fist sent by the female knight. Don't call me that. Said the knight in anger, it was obvious to Leviathan that this particular female didn't like being called as such. As you wish complied Leviathan, getting a glare from the knight before calming down, the man did just save her after all. Anyway. Let's get back to business shall we? Suggested Leviathan, gaining the attention of the knight. Now you should know that I am a devil, one of the strongest ruling the underworld actually. Informed Leviathan, surprising the knight. A devil? So the stories about God are real I assume? Inquired the knight, getting a nod from Leviathan. Indeed. And not only that but other gods from the many mythologies exist as well added Leviathan, much to the confusion of the knight. Ah, I see it seems I must educate you further once we return to the underworld. Understood Leviathan, holding his chin. Return to the underworld. Repeated the knight confused. Oh, that's right, I decided that I will be bringing you with me, since you have nowhere else to go. Clarified Leviathan. And what if I shall refuse? Asked the knight cautiously. Well then I shall take back the healing water I used on you, resulting in you bleeding out once again. Replied Leviathan nonchalantly. The knight flinched and gulped before hesitantly nodding, Leviathan grinned and prepared a magic circle. Now just step inside this magic circle and you should be transported to the underworld right beside me. You know what magic is right? Inquired Leviathan, earning a snarl from the knight. 
I'm not that uninformed about the supernatural and magic, I happen to know a very powerful magus by the name of Merlin. Informed the knight. I see well then, son of King Arthur, Mordred Pendergon. Are you ready to face the supernatural world? Asked Leviathan with a smirk. Mordred Pendergon, the knight of treachery and son of King Arthur, nodded in anticipation at the new adventure she would now have to face. Over a thousand years later. I say hi to, a loyal servant of the Leviathan. A man of great power and the ability to change the world, was watching closely as his ex fiancee faced off against the governor of the fallen angels. Bateria fired multiple demonic blasts at Azazel, but he wasn't the governor of all fallen angels for no reason. Azazel dodged and fired a powerful beam of light, to which Kateri responded by putting up a magical shield. Bisei turned away from the fight and faced Bali's direction, where he was currently ending a multitude of magician lives. Issei grinned as he watched his rival annihilate the rather weak magicians without even moving, he would definitely enjoy another fight with him. Zerafo Leviathan did not pay attention to anything other than the ongoing fight between Azazel and Kateria, she felt the need to do something, something that would completely win her the loyalty of Issei Haidu. I need to kill her thought Zerafo as her eyes narrowed and she released her devil wings. Issei, Serzich's and Michael looked at Zerafo with shocked expressions as she then flew upwards, leaving the barrier formed by Serzich's and Michael. Seraphal, no. Shouted Serzich's in distress, trying to stop the Devil King from interfering. The Terrier scowled at Azazel who merely yawned, irritating the descendant even further. Do you find this boring? Asked Kateria with her eyebrow twitching. Well, to be honest you're not really that strong, you may be a descendant, but let's be real here. So what? Replied Azazel, insulting Kateria. Ahaha. Very well, let's see if you can maintain that smug look on your face after this challenged Kateria as she released some type of snake and began absorbing it, strengthening her aura. Oh? Hummed Azazel interested. Kateria laughed as she felt new power coursing through her veins, and her magical power increased to a much higher limit. But before she could do anything to harm Azazel, a certain magical girl flew in. Kateria's eyes narrowed angrily as she then glared at Seraphol, Azazel looked at Seraphol confused. Let me take over this fight, Azazel Chan. Requested Seraphol as her staff began leaking out with an icy aura. All right then, if that's what you really want then fine at least I don't have to use Fafner for now. Accepted Azazel, murmuring the last part. You plan to face me, Seraphol. How utterly pathetic. Inisulted Kateria as she fired an incredibly powerful demonic attack, she grinned as she had thought she had extinguished the fake Leviathan. However she soon felt an icy presence behind her, and she flew upwards quickly, narrowly dodging a barrage of ice swords. DSK. You're not as pathetic as I thought, Seraphol. But don't think you can defeat me, not with the power of office aiding me. Warned Kateria as she fired more demonic attacks at Seraphol, Seraphol created an ice barrier, but it broke as soon as the demonic attacks came into contact with it. Office. So she is the leader of the cow's brigade, as I suspected. Thought Azazel as he held his chin in deep thought. Issei looked at ongoing battle between the two leviathans, he knew he would have to interfere soon. Issei looked over to Azazel, who looked back at him and sighed. Azazel knew now that Issei had made a decision, one that he hoped wasn't permanent. Issei then looked over to Vali, Vali noticed his glare and nodded at his rival. Issei nodded back and smirked evilly, he then released his devil wings and flew up high into the sky, just barely above Vali. Serzichas and Michael looked over to Issei with suspicious eyes, while Azazel simply smirked, Issei was kind off like a second son to him, so he certainly expected this to happen. Over at the old school building, Kuroyama and Riaz looked over the window in surprise at seeing Issei. They didn't understand why Issei would leave the barrier without anyone to fight or so they thought. Issei-chan. What are you doing? Asked Seraphol confused as the fight between her and Kateria had paused. Kateria looked at Issei confused as well, she thought that he would face her now, but she couldn't shake off the feeling that she was wrong. If you Issei hide you theme, watch dull character theme video for this. Issei raised his hand and started vibrating it, soon after this, the world seemed like it was shaking, and much to everyone's shock, the force balance breaker of the half-vampire of Rhea's Gremory had been deactivated. The deactivated Gaspar's sacred gear blurted out Kiba shocked, Zenobia, and Arena looked around shocked as well. They then looked behind them to see that the rest have been unfrozen, as well as the remaining troops of the devils, angels and fallen angels. The magicians stopped their assault in shock, while Vali looked at his rival with crossed arms. Sona, Tsubaki, Akeno and the others that were frozen looked around confused. Kiba, Irina and Zenovia approached them, telling them that they would explain later. Issei-chan how did you? Blurted out Seraphol shocked. Issei glanced at her and Kateria, before staring at Serzich's who still had the barrier up. Now that I have everyone's attention it's time to unveil the true Issei-haidu. Announced Issei, getting everyone around to stare at him in anticipation. 
the magicians, the armies of the three factions and its leaders, Kateria and the two devil peerages, all stared at him in silence, curiosity and suspicion. Balance Break muttered a say with his bangs covering his eyes, and before anyone could react, a bright green light engulfed a say. Welsh Dragon Balance Breaker. Boom Drake's voice as the scale mail began forming, and soon, Issei was in full armor. Everyone who hadn't already known about Issei being this generation Sekiruite had their mouths wide open in shock. I, I was right muttered Sona in shock as she stared at the now armored Issei Haidu. Issei flirted his massive aura, eradicating all other weaker life forms around him. Serzich's and Michael quickly reinforced another barrier, protecting Sona and the others. Seraphal, Kateria and Vali could handle the powerful aura, although Kateria and Seraphal were struggling a bit. Over at the old school building, Kuroyama was barely holding her own against the aura, not to mention she was shielding Ria's, Gaspar and Kaneko. Viteria looked at Issei with shocked pupils, she hadn't expected the Red Dragon Emperor to be her beloved. Especially since last time she checked, he was a pure-blooded devil. Don't you think that's starting a bit too rough? Inquired Vali with a smirk, Issei smirked back and hit his aura, allowing those who weren't in the protection of Serzich's barrier time to breathe. Well, you were the one who pleaded for a grand entrance, as you put it. Shrugged Issei as he descended a bit from his high position in the sky. As he descended he stopped right in front of Kateria, who was still cautious. I apologize for deceiving you, the truth is I wanted to join you the moment you asked, but I promised Vali. Apologized Issei as he bowed his head down to Kateria, his true master. Kateria's heart fluttered for a few moments before finally regaining control over herself. She didn't say anything, she simply leaned on him like she used to when they were children. Issei blushed at this, but he held her with his arms, finally embracing the woman he loved after so long. Seraphil watched as the two embraced each other, she was furious, not only had Issei betrayed her, he also had the nerve to act all ovi-dovi with Kateria right in front of her. Kateria noticed this and turned her head around with a smug look. Not so close now, are you? Mocked Kateria, causing Seraphil to cry out in anger and charge at the embracing devils, until she was suddenly knocked down to the ground by a powerful demonic ball. Thanks Vali. Thanked Issei, receiving a nod from his rival. Sona cried out in worry for her sister as she rushed to catch her falling sister, she was successful in catching her, but she was knocked out by the blast. Sona glared at Vali with immense hatred, but she calmed herself and returned to the barrier. Vali huffed and turned to Azazel who didn't seem surprised by any of these events, at all. You weren't mad, Azazel? Asked Vali curiously, Azazel grinned and shook his head. Not at all, I expected this from the start. Replied Azazel, earning him suspicious glares from the others around the barrier. You knew they would betray us yet you did not warn us? Inquired Michael with suspicion. If you think I'm siding with them, you're wrong. I'm the one who suggested peace, I wouldn't do anything to endanger it. Clarified Azazel. He's right, this is all on us. Reassured Issei, as he then received the sad stares of the girls who had fallen for him. Issei why? Asked Riaz who was on the verge of tears, Serzichas saw this, and an angry expression made its way onto his face. Issei Haidu? For daring to make my sister cry, you will pay the ultimate price. Declared Serzichas as his eyes glowed a dangerous red. Issei let go of Kateria and got in front of her in a protective manner, causing her to blush lightly. Wait. Ani Sama tried to stop Ria's, but it was too late as Serzich's fired a massive ball of his power of destruction, the ball was about to hit Issei, and he was getting prepared to block, until. Divide. Boomed Albion as the ball that Serzich's fired decreased in size rapidly, as it hit Issei, he was barely phased, in fact he looked even shinier in his crimson armor. Serzich's tightened his fists in frustration, but Grafia held his hand to keep him calm. Kateria was going to ask if Issei was alright, but seeing as his armor didn't seem phased at all, she assumed he was fine. Red Dragon Emperor, I assume you still have Ascalon? Inquired Michael, who was surprisingly calm. I do. Confirmed Issei, Michael nodded and simply continued maintaining the barrier. You traitor. Accused Zenovia who was shaking in her feet. Issei looked over to her curiously as she hadn't spoken much since this meeting began. I, I thought I had finally found someone worth serving. Someone worth giving my faith to. But you're no different from Kakabiel, a traitor. Ranted Zenovia, causing Issei to flinch in surprise. Before Issei could respond, he found himself distracted by a massive demonic wave, aiming to hit the barrier being sustained by the three faction leaders. Issei did not warn them as he believed the barrier could withstand this unknown attack, but boy was he wrong. The barrier shattered, and everyone inside could barely dodge the wave of energy, except for Zenovia who was hit dead center. She brought out Durandal in time and was able to prevent a fatal blow, but she ended up unconscious. Irina and the others ran for her and immediately checked on her well-being. While the leaders looked around to find the source of the attack, Issei didn't know either and was looking around as well. 
I didn't think she was here sighed Bali as he massaged his temples. Issei looked at Bali with a curious look until he heard the sound of armor colliding with the ground. He looked down and saw a fully armored knight not too far away from Serzich's location. Salutations. I am the one responsible for breaking your barrier. Declared the knight boldly, earning deadpan expressions from a few people. Now this I didn't expect, Vali do you know this knight? Called out Azazel curiously. Vali nodded, much to Issei and Kateria's curiosity. Vali was about to explain, but the knight wouldn't have any of that. I don't need you to do my introduction, brat. Informed the knight, causing Vali to flinch. The knight looked up and found the Red Dragon Emperor in all his glory, underneath the knight's helmet, Mordred Pendragon blushed at the sight of him. So I assume you're a member of this new cow's brigade, correct? Inquired Azazel as he crossed his arms. Mordred stared at him with a bored expression and simply nodded, confirming Azazel's suspicions. Cow's brigade, the rumored terrorist faction that has been collecting members from all mythologies recognized Serzich's in his thoughts. How dare you hurt, Zenovia chan Cried out Arena who rushed to attack with her Excalibur Mimic, before Michael could stop her though, she was already clashing blades with Mordred. Her Excalibur Mimic was being pushed back with ease, considering Mordred was only using one arm to wield Clarent. Mordred yawned and simply shattered the Excalibur Mimic like it was some plastic toy. My Excalibur how? Blurted out Arena shocked, the others were shocked as well, seeing an Excalibur fragment destroyed so easily wasn't something you see every day. Your Excalibur fragment was named Mimic, correct? An appropriate name for a fragment of a sword that wasn't even the real Excalibur. Mocked Mordred, much to the confusion and surprise of Irina and Michael. What are you talking about? Asked Irina confused. I'm saying that these so-called Excalibur fragments you carry aren't even actual fragments of the real Excalibur. They are only fragments of an inferior blade made by God in an attempt to mimic the real Excalibur. Answered Mordred, much to the shock of everyone. That can't possibly be true. Denied Arena blinded by her faith in God. Deny it all you want, it will still remain factual. Shrugged Mordred as she then turned to face Michael. Say, why don't you confirm it? Suggested Mordred with a smirk, Michael sighed at this and nodded. It is true, father was truly astonished by the blade, but was shocked when even he himself could not replicate it, so he made a convincing replica. Confirmed Michael. Convincing my ass. Mocked Mordred, causing others to raise an eyebrow at the use of such foul language. Issei was certainly amused by the knight, and he could certainly relate to the knight as well. Issei, with all of that you've done today, it practically means you've decided to join the cow's brigade, right? Inquired Kateria hopeful. Of course, but if possible I'd like to have my own faction or team, similar to Vali. Requested Issei. Of course, anything for you Issei. Agreed Kateria, much to the other girl's ire. I think that's enough for play, don't you agree my rival? Inquired Vali, getting a nod from Issei who gestured for Kateria to stay back. Kateria nodded and landed on the ground, a fair distance away from the group of Serzichs and Michael. The sky began to darken, lightning crackled as the two heavenly dragons hovered in the air side by side, the red and white auras contrasting against each other, sending off a menacing vibe. With the red and white dragons joining forces with this cow's brigade, it's a good thing we've decided on peace. Said Michael, staring at the two dragons in slight fear of the cow's brigade. You're right there Michael. Agreed Serzichs and Azazel. The groups of Rias and Sona, along with the exorcists, were now inside of a barrier maintained by Grafia. So what do you plan to do now, heavenly dragons? Asked Mordred curiously as she stared at the duo. We decided that our long-awaited battle would begin here, even though we are technically allies now we still need to know who is stronger as of now. Replied Issei as he and Vali then maintained a good distance between each other. Ah, so you plan to have an audience for this battle. I guess we're pretty lucky, one doesn't get a front row seat at the Battle of the Heavenly Dragons every day. Said Mordred amused as she materialized a soda and a seat. Since she didn't really want to reveal her identity to her enemies yet, she would drink the soda with a straw, so her face wouldn't be seen. As much as I would love to see this fight, you realize this might give us a chance to formulate a strategy to beat you both, right? Inquired Azazel, getting glares from Serzich's and Michael as he could have broken up the fight and throw away their chance to do the latter. Of course we do, which is why we're letting you watch. Informed Vali as his aura began to leak out, as well as Issei's. Azazel laughed and gestured for them to continue. Issei and Vali grinned as the silence overcame the area, and as soon as the lightning crackled again, their fight would begin. Crackle. Their two massive auras clashed, resulting in a powerful shockwave being released. The leaders of the three factions put up another barrier to protect everyone, as the fight would definitely pose a threat to the more weaker devils and humans in the area. Issei threw a few punches at Bali, but he was able to block the attack and counter with a roundhouse kick. Issei blocked it but was pushed back and was left open. Boost. 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 
boosted Issei as he then prepared a small ball of energy. Dragon shot. Fired Issei as the energy ball easily hit Bali with its speed and power. Bali grunted and charged two energy balls of pure white auras. Issei saw this and prepared to fire another dragon shot, as Bali then threw the two balls, Issei fired another dragon shot. The energy balls collided and exploded, filling the sky with smoke. Issei flew upwards to escape the smoke, but when he got out he was quickly sent back flying into the ground by Vali, who was waiting for Issei at the top. Divide. 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 Divided Vali as he could sense Issei's power beginning to fade. Issei snarled and his powerful aura flared, he began to let his demonic aura leak out, and soon streaks of water could be seen swirling around the scale mail. The combination of both his devil powers and his sacred gear. Spoke Azazel amused. Serzichas looked on carefully, while Michael was watching both amused and cautiously. He was certainly a serious angel, but he had his free time. Boost. 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 Boosted Issei as he then activated his scale mail's thrusters and flew up to confront Vali. Vali saw his rival emerge from the still flowing smoke, but he now had streaks of green water flowing around him. Vali fired two more energy balls at Issei, only for them to be swiped away by the streaks of water around Issei. Issei quickly teleported behind Vali and grabbed him by the shoulder to turn him around and punch him in the gut. Vali cried out in pain, and before he could recover, Issei kneed him in the gut, causing further pain in the specific area. Vali this time, coughed out blood and was quick to push Issei away, to prevent any further harming of his gut. As soon as Issei was pushed back, he charged once again after boosting a few more times. Issei soon sent a fist flying at Vali's way, only for him to dodge and successfully uppercut Issei. Issei's eyes were widened in shock as Vali was significantly faster than before, a dragon's rage was something that truly could not be underestimated. Issei used the streaks of water around him to create a shield, successfully blocking the energy ball Vali fired. Soon after this, Issei turned the streaks of water into a spear-like shape and fired them at Vali, who in an effort to avoid the lethal bits of water, began flying around the school to avoid the homing spears of water. Issei saw that his spears were not catching up to Vali, so he decided to boost and transfer some power transfer. Issei transferred power to his spears. As the spears received the gift, they quickly sped up and caught up to Vali who was rather surprised. Knowing that the spears would catch up soon, Vali turned around to try and block the spears. Vali directly used the power he gained from Issei earlier to enhance his magical shield and was able to block all but one of the spears. The remaining spear was quick like a blur and tore a small hole in Vali's left shoulder. Bali held his left shoulder in pain and begun focusing on healing it, until Issei appeared right in front of him with a spear in his hands. Michael's eyes widened in shock as he recognized the spear. Rangamini had blurted out Michael in shock, gaining surprised expressions from the exorcists and Azazel. Issei thrust the spear at Bali, who barely dodged it. As Vali dodged, Issei began spinning and twirling his spear around, making it hard for Vali to dodge even a single hit. Eventually Issei was able to hit Vali's gut with the back end of the spear, which was not as pointy and lethal as the tip. Vali grunted and grabbed the spear, only for him to quickly regret that decision and pull away his hands as he felt a burning sensation when he touched the spear. Careful Vali, this spear is holy. Warned Issei who then thrust the spear once again at Vali. Vali formed a confused expression on his face as he dodged the spear. Then how are you able to wield it? Asked Vali curiously as he threw a few punches at Issei who flew upwards to dodge. The holy element does not affect me too much, I've had a lot of training with it. Replied Issei as he threw the spear at Vali who tried to dodge, but was his armor was grazed at his right arm, and the armor on that area broke. Vali tried to restore the piece of armor he had lost, but Issei was quick kick him down to the ground, creating a crater as he crashed. Issei-sama is so powerful muttered Kuroyama who had been silent all this time, she was unsure of what to think of Issei's betrayal as she too, admired him and loved him. Ahahaha. As expected of my rival complimented Vali as he got up, his scale mail fully restored. Well, this isn't much of a present, but I hope you like it. Said Issei as his boosted gear began glowing. Blade. Boom drag as Ascalon could now be seen connected with the boosted gear. Michael looked on with slight anger in his eyes, while Azazel couldn't help but chuckle. The dragon slayer. I won't even be able to deflect one hit from that. Informed Albion. Then I won't let him hit me. Said Vali as he narrowly dodged Issei who dived at him with Ascalon. Gonna take more than that level of speed to escape my grasp, Vali. Said Issei with a smirk as he upped his speed game and quickly caught up to Vali. He looked shocked for a second, but compassed himself and dodged Ascalon as Issei thrust it at him. Issei spun and sent a kick towards Vali's face, Vali could not block nor dodge this one and took the strike head on, causing him to cough out blood. Before Vali could recover Issei grabbed both of Vali's shoulders and smashed his head onto Vali's. 
This action broke both of Issei's and Vali's helmets, their handsome faces now visible to the human supernatural eye. Mordred blushed at the sight of Issei, but she was quick to hide it and continued sipping on her soda. As Urzichas and Grafia looked closer, they could see that both of the heavenly dragons had wide grins on their faces, they were truly enjoying this battle. Mordred saw this too and she smirked as well, her smirk was almost identical to that of Issei's, must have been a natural thing for those trained by Leviathan. Issei and Vali both threw a punch at the same time, their fists colliding and creating a small shockwave that would have killed the world's greatest human athlete. Their fists were shaking, struggling to determine which fist was superior. Vali was the first to falter and was quick to recover by teleporting behind Issei and holding both of his fists to send Issei to the ground. But as Vali moved his connected fists to hit Issei, Issei quickly spun and grabbed Vali's legs. Issei began spinning him around and suddenly let go as the velocity began to take higher heights. Vali was sent crashing into the gym, destroying most of it in the process. Your host is certainly powerful, Dreg. Complimented Albion as Vali was trying to escape the rubble. Yours isn't so bad, but I guess I was the lucky one this time. Boasted Drake proudly. Eventually, Vali was able to break through the rubble and began charging a powerful demonic attack. Issei who now had his helmet restored landed on the ground and simply extended his arms in an open manner. Vali smirked and fired the demonic attack as his helmet restored itself. As the demonic attack was about to hit Issei, his aura flared up immensely, quickly disposing of the attack Vali had just sent. Vali was shocked for a second, but smirked as he understood what Issei was doing, and he too extended his arms and let the air flow through him. Oh no blurted out Drag and Albion worriedly. I, who is about to awaken chanted Issei and Vali simultaneously. I'm the heavenly dragon who has stolen the principles of domination from God continued Issei. I'm the heavenly dragon who has taken the principles of supremacy from God chanted Vali. The others in the area were getting fearful, with the exception of the leaders and Mordred. Issei. Surely you do not wish to endanger everyone here? Argued Drake, who received no reply from Issei. Vali, do you desire to be consumed by my power? Asked Albion with a disapproving tone. I laugh at the infinite, and I grieve at the dream continue chanting Issei, much to the anger of Drake. I envy the infinite, and pursue the dream chanted Vali, much to the disapproval of Albion. Before any of the two could continue with the chance of their respective juggernaut drives, the boundary field protecting the school broke into pieces, and a young handsome man with a staff landed on the ground between Issei and Vali. What's with the intense auras? I probably would have died if I butted in when you guys finished those chants. Laughed Bhikkhu, descendant of Sun Wukong. Vali stared at Bhikkhu for a few seconds before sighing and controlling his aura, Issei did so as well. What are you doing here, Bhikkhu? Asked Vali curiously. It's time to fight with the northern gods. I hear you're one of us now too, Sekar Yuite. You can come too. Replied Bhikkhu, suggesting a fight to Issei. Before Issei could reply, Kateria Leviathan landed right beside her lover. I'm afraid Issei will be coming with me to HQ. Informed Kateria as she grabbed Issei's hand protectively. Bhikkhu only laughed and prepared a magic circle to leave. Vali looked at his rival and grinned, Issei grinned as well, and the two soon fist bumped each other. The descendant of Sun Wukong, huh? You certainly look good alongside the two heavenly dragons complimented Azazel amused. Bhikkhu and laughed and winked at Kuroyama who blushed ever so slightly. But looks do run in the family, I'd probably look good with just about anyone. Said Bhikkhu modestly before he disappeared with Vali. Issei sighed and dispersed his armor, much to Mordred's enjoyment. Issei turned around to face the ones he had betrayed, they all looked at him with conflicted expressions on their faces. I'm sorry I had to betray you like this, but my true loyalties lie with Kateria Leviathan apologized to say, getting an understanding look from Serzich's and Michael. I can understand your loyalty to the Leviathan bloodline, but what about your peerage? Asked Serzich's anxiously. Azazel will take care of them, am I right? Inquired to say, getting a happy nod from Azazel. Oh, and Serzich's, if any of my peerage members want to leave, please do try and find them a better master. Requested to say, getting a smile from Serzich's and the others. With these words they had already found the good inside of Issei. You can count on it, Issei san. Said Serzich's with a thumbs up. Issei smiled at this and turned to his lover. Shall we? Inquired Issei as he offered her a hand, which she happily took. Know this, fake Mayu, Serzich's. My Issei may not be as harsh as the rest of us, but rest assured, he will kill you if need be. Informed Kateria cruelly, getting glares from the girls that liked Issei. Issei sighed at this and simply looked over to the now standing knight. Do you want to come with us? Offered Issei, but Mordred shook her head. Nah, I'll meet you at the base some other time. For now, I let you enjoy your time with her. Declined Mordred before disappearing in small red particles. A weird way to teleport, a thought shared by everyone. 
And thus, Issei teleported away to the Cow's Brigade HQ, a location given to him by Vali earlier. Serzich's, Michael and Az's Alal sighed as the meeting was officially over and peace could begin. Quite a rough start, but I just know we'll pull through. Cheered up Azazel, earning smiles from everyone. Right. Agreed everyone cheerfully. Rhea's Gremory and her peerage all stood in shock as the governor of the Fallen Angels, Azazel, just declared himself the new advisor of the Occult Research Club. What in the world is going on? Demanded Rhea slightly irritated. I asked Serzich's about it and he told me to talk to Sir Afal's little sister. Explained Azazel. I too blurted out Murayama in shock. If I didn't do it, my sister would have definitely gotten sad. And she's still recovering from Issei's Bertrail, so I had no choice but to obey. Explained Sona. I see I understand then. Understood Rias. Then I wish you the best of luck. Said Sona as she and Tsubaki quickly left the room before Rias could call them out. Anyway, in exchange for letting me stay in this academy. I was given one condition by Serzich's. Coughed out Azazel, gaining everyone's attention. What condition? Asked Gasper curiously. I have to properly train your underdeveloped sacred gears, haha. <laughs> replied Azazel with a cheeky grin. I'll apply what I've learned from my research to bring each of you to your full potentials. Declared Azazel, earning astonished stares from everyone. Listen up. You're gonna call me Azazel Sensei from now on, got it ordered Azazel. Azazel Sensei. That sounds so perverted coming from you. Spoke Caddis as she scratched the back of her head. Well, that's about it. Best of luck to everyone. Finished Azazel, getting an irritated look from Rias. Best of luck I haven't approved of Thai. Oh, that's right. I have another message from Serzich's, one that you'll find rather intriguing. Cut off Azazel. Another message? Repeated Rias confused. Since Issei Haidu is currently an enemy as of this moment, his peerage is rather lonely without their master. Serzich's has ordered that all members of the Occult Research Club are to move into the Haidu household. Clarified Azazel, much to everyone's shock. What? Blurted out Rias shocked, while Caddis and Murayama squealed in excitement. The what? Blurted out Vali Lucifer in confusion. Kateria Leviathan sighed and crossed her arms, her breasts bouncing at the contact. A vacation, I'm sure even somebody like you has heard of one? Inquired Kateria with an annoyed expression. I didn't take you for a slacker, Leviathan. Said Biku with an amused expression. I'm not slacking, this has been approved by Shalba. I will take this chance to get to know my essay better. Said Kateria, glaring at Biku. Kuroka listened with great interest and curiosity. Naya, where exactly will we be having a vacation? Asked Kuroka curiously. Vali and Arthur stared at Kateria with anticipation at her answer, they too were curious. A private beach resort somewhere near the coastline of Kyoto. Replied Kateria, much to the surprise of Kuroka. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that a bit dangerous? Inquired Arthur, Vali nodded in agreement. Arthur is right, that would be walking straight through enemy territory. We haven't kidnapped anyone from their faction yet, so they aren't enemies just yet. Informed Kateria, fixing her glasses. I still don't see why we need to come along, wouldn't it be better if it were just you and Issei? Spoke Biku, gaining another glare from the descendant of Leviathan. Indeed it would, but that bastard Pendragon would definitely come along. I probably wouldn't even be able to have my fun with Issei, if only she came with us. Complained Kateria, rubbing her temples. Arthur was slightly offended, but he decided to stay quiet for now. Vali however sighed and simply nodded, earning a raised eyebrow from Kateria. You'll come? Asked Kateria, Vali nodded and shrugged. Why not, I don't see any tough opponents right now. Replied Vali as he soon walked away, followed by his team. Kateria sighed and was about to return to the castle, until she felt a cold metal make contact with her thighs. Kateria didn't move, but she turned her head around to see a woman with purple reddish hair and a tight purple bodysuit. You blurted out Kateria in anger. Nice to see you again, descendant. Greeted Scarlet Lancer with a sweet smile. Demis HQ. How'd you even afford something like this? Asked Mordred curiously as she looked around what Issei dubbed, Team Issei HQ. I can literally fight gods, money isn't a problem for me. Replied Issei who was setting up some furniture. Mordred chuckled at this and simply walked over to the couch and sat down. Issei wiped some sweat on his forehead and looked over to Mordred who was wearing her casual attire, which consisted of a crimson leather jacket and a tube top that exposes her abdomen. You know for someone who hates being called a girl, you sure like dressing like one. Said Issei, who received a small pout from Mordred in return. Old habits, die hard. Shrugged Mordred as she placed her feet on the small table in front of the couch. What old habits? Asked Issei curiously. The ones I got from that one guy in 2004, remember? Replied Mordred who rested her head on the couch. Oh, Kyrie was it? Recognized Issei. Yeah, I think he's dead now though. Confirmed Mordred as she sat right back up. 
Mordred stretched her arms tiredly and yawned. Man, I really want to swim right now. Lucky for you then, Kateria suggested we all go to a private resort for small vacation. Informed to say, Mordred grinned at this. Well, I didn't think that woman was capable of having fun. Mocked Mordred cheekily. Does she remind you of your father? Asked Issei curiously as he begun to prepare a magic circle. Mordred walked over to him and stepped inside the magic circle. Compared to him, she doesn't even come close. Replied Mordred as she and Issei disappeared in the magic circle. Issei and Mordred appeared within the magic circle, around them was Bali team and Kateria Leviathan. Mordred glared at Kateria before turning to her father's descendant. I see you've brought the knight, Issei. Said Kateria with displeasure in her voice. Issei rose an eyebrow at this, while Mordred only glared at her more before smirking. You see, it's because Issei can't live without my presence. Yet he lasted twenty years without seeing you. Mocked Mordred, Kateria got incredibly mad and was about to start a fight before Vali stepped in between them. Now, now, we aren't here to start a fight, as much as I want one. Calm down Vali, the two girls backed down and turned away. Issei chuckled at the display, while Biku was grinning widely. So, I assume we are here to discuss the plans for the resort. Assumed Issei, Kateria nodded at this. That's right, we shall be headed off tomorrow. So prepare your items, Issei, we'll be there for a while. You're coming too, Vali. Ask Issei with amusement in his voice. Not like I have anyone fun to fight right now, unless you want to go at it. Offered Vali with a battle-hungry grin, which Issei returned. Naya, we can't have the two heavenly dragons go at each other's throats right now, so save your fight for later. Spoke Kuroka, getting huffs from Issei and Vali. I can't wait for you to see me in my swimsuit, Issei. I'm sure it'll make you jump at me like a beast. Said Kateria as she licked her lips, Mordred laughed at this. Ahahaha, as if Issei would get turned on by those beach balls. He likes them just the right size. Insulted Mordred, earning a challenging smirk from Kateria. And would you consider those tiny displays the right size? Asked Kateria as she pointed at Mordred's chest. Issei paled at that because he knew exactly what would happen if you made fun of Mordred's chest. Mordred was shaking violently as she held her fists hard, Kateria had an amused smirk on her face as she watched Mordred shake. Oh, did I trigger you? Asked Kateria with a condescending smirk. You probably shouldn't have done that said Issei as he paled, Kateria looked over to her lover with a confused expression, before narrowly dodging an earth-shattering blow from the demonic sword Clarent. The ground shaked at the impact of the sword, and a small explosion erupted. Vali and his team had a barrier around them, while Issei took the blast head on. Kateria however teleported up onto the sky. As the smoke from the explosion dissipated, Mordred could be seen glaring at Kateria with her battle armor now equipped. Kateria summoned her staff in defense, but Issei would stop any further conflict. Balance breaker. Boom the boosted gear as Issei got in between the two girls with his scale mail on. Mordred glared at Issei and pointed her clarent at him as a warning, but Issei didn't flinch. Get out of the way, Issei. Demanded Mordred as her clarent begun glowing violently and a massive aura soon erupted from clarent. Issei shook his head, causing Mordred to get even angrier. You two will stop this, at once. Ordered Issei, but to no avail as Mordred held her sword up, Issei's eyes widened in shock, but sharpened his gaze as he prepared to block the attack. Last warning. Warned Mordred as the sword was releasing a booming sound as the aura flowed through it. Issei opened his arms wide in a protective manner, Mordred bit her mouth as she was about to unleash her power. Clarent. Shouted Mordred as the sword erupted in even more power, Issei looked over to Vali for help, but he smirked and shook his head. Issei was going to kill him later. Blood Arthur. The sword Clarent unleashed a powerful fortress destroying beam of destruction. Issei grit his teeth as he boosted himself multiple times so that he could take the brunt of the attack. Soon enough, the beam collided with Issei's scale mail, causing him to grit his teeth harder as he was struggling to suppress a scream of pain. He closed his fists tightly and kept dealing with the pain like a man, seeing Issei take this blast head on caused Kateria to blush. Issei was slowly losing consciousness as Mordred was no joke and could easily get into the top 10 strongest in the world, if only she revealed herself to everyone. Vali noticed this and sighed as he activated his scale mail and teleported behind Mordred. Mordred glanced behind her and gave Vali a silent warning by glaring at him, Vali shrugged and tapped her shoulder, then teleported away. Mordred grit her teeth in annoyance and was about to curse at him until she felt her power get cut in half. Divide. Divide. Vali had divided Mordred's strength and slowly, her beam had dissipated into nothingness. As the beam died out, Issei forced a smile and fell to the ground, exhausted. Mordred's sword fell to the ground, creating a loud metallic noise. It soon dematerialized. Arthur was slightly surprised that she had given up so easily, but he guessed she wasn't foolish enough to try and take on the two heavenly dragons at once, especially since she had feelings for one of them. 
Bateria landed on the ground to check on her Issei, who was breathing heavily on the ground, with his goofy smirk still on his face. Kateria had an expression of worry, but she calmed down when she saw his smirk. Idiot. Puffed out Kateria with a small pout, Issei found this cute and wanted to kiss her, but his body wouldn't allow it. His consciousness soon faded and the boosted gear on his left arm dematerialized. Seeing this Kateria panicked and lifted his head, unconsciously calling out his name. Mordred saw this as well, and a look of despair began to etch itself onto her pretty face. However Vali was completely calm, he sighed and went over to pick him up. He'll be fine, he should wake up by the time we get to the resort. Reassured Vali, much to the girl's relief. Kateria soon glared at Mordred and was about to start an argument, but Vali had told Arthur to go take Mordred for a walk or something. As the others left, only Vali and Karoka were in the area with Issei. Karoka prepared a magic circle to leave, and soon enough, they were out of the area as well, seeking to treat Issei. The next day. Bateria Leviathan, Biku, Arthur and Mordred had already arrived at the private resort. And their swimsuits, luggage and everything they needed were already packed and stored in the mansion within the resort. This resort is owned by a rich family who secretly work for the Cow's Brigade, although the employees were not aware of this. One condition to being allowed to use the resort was that none of the employees were to be hurt or killed. The group was standing just outside the mansion, waiting for the rest to arrive. And soon enough they had arrived in a magic circle, Kateria had placed a spell which alters the memories of the employees, making them think they had all arrived at a yacht. Vali took notice of this and simply laughed at how easily the humans here could be deceived, unlike those of the hero faction. As the luggage that Vali, Kuroka and Issei brought was taken into the mansion, they immediately headed for the beach. They had their swimsuits with them of course. Issei was wearing crimson swimming shorts, while Vali was wearing white swimming shorts. Their lean and well-built bodies had the girls almost drooling, but Mordred and Kateria mostly paid attention to Issei's shining six-pack, while Kuroka admired both Issei's and Vali's. Kateria was clad in a blue bikini, while Mordred was in a red one. Kuroka was in a black two-piece, but she decided she would just lay on the sand for now. Arthur and Biku were also in swimming shorts, but they didn't need the attention of the girls, so they began having a swimming competition. Lefay had wanted to come, but she was still on a mission helping out the hero faction with Cow Cow. Mordred excitedly jumped into the water and began swimming far away, declaring that she will wrestle with a great white shark. Issei paled at that and was about to go dip in the ocean as well, until he was tapped by Kateria, and she gestured for him to follow. Issei nodded and followed her to a secluded area, surrounded by rocks and sand. Issei sighed and leaned on the concrete wall, while Kateria began summoning a magic circle. Bateria come on it hasn't even been two days, and now you want to have sex at the beach? Inquired Issei massaging his temples. Kateria blushed and immediately denied the claim. That's not what I was planning. I brought you here because I was blackmailed into doing so. Denied Kateria still blushing. Issei rose an eyebrow at this. Blackmailed into doing what? Asked Issei suspiciously, until the magic circle began glowing and a figure appeared. As the light of the magic circle dissipated, what was now in front of Issei completely stunned him, and little Issei certainly enjoyed it. Sensei blurted out Issei completely stunned at the sudden appearance of his master, Scarlet Lancer, but what stunned him the most was the incredibly amazing swimsuit she had, and the flower on her hair only added to her beauty. Kateria's eyebrow twitched in annoyance and jealousy as it seems that right now, Issei found Scarlet Lancer more attractive. It's been a while, Issei. I hope you like what I've brought for you. Greeted Scarlet as she then winked at him, causing his boner to go into overdrive. Issei began shaking, he was struggling to control his urges to charge at his master and begin violating her in ways she would probably enjoy. Why are you here, Sensei? Asked Issei as he grit his teeth, cursing himself. Oh, I heard that you were going on a vacation. And I thought, why that's not a bad idea. Replied Scarlet with a smile. The Terrier made a HMPH. Sound as she walked away and soon joined the rest at the beach. Issei looked to her for a moment before sighing and looking back at his master. I'm happy that you're so eager to take me, Issei. But that'll have to wait. Said Scarlet with a proud grin, Issei sighed and took a seat right beside her as she gestured for him to sit down. I want to take this chance to tell you a few things, more specifically my decision to join your team. Informed Scarlet, much to Issei's surprise. Are you sure? Won't that European government you work for get pissed? Asked Issei worriedly. Don't worry, I've already cut all ties with them. And besides, that wasn't where my true allegiance lied with anyway. Replied Scarlet with a shrug, Issei rose an eyebrow at this. Then, who? Asked Issei curiously. Scarlet closed her eyes and took a deep breath. Issei, I haven't been completely honest with you. And I hope you can forgive me for that. Informed Scarlet, much to Issei's confusion. What haven't you been telling me? Asked Issei slightly suspicious. 
My true name is, Scathich. And my true allegiance lied with the Celtic faction. Replied Scathich with a frown on her face. Issei's eyes widened in shock at this, his master had been working for the Celts, a faction that has been quite neutral for a few decades. Greg, did you know about this? Asked Issei in his thoughts. Yes, I did. Although I wouldn't have figured it out if it weren't for the fact that she keeps screaming out the name of her spear, Gabolg. Replied Drag, much to Issei's surprise. Gabolg. Was that name supposed to ring any bells? I only knew about its name because of Azazel. Asked Issei confused, causing Scathich to giggle cutely. You're an idiot, Gabolg is the legendary spear wielded by the immortal witch, Scathich, and passed down to legends such as Kuchulin. To mistake her for anyone else is near impossible for someone as old as I am. Replied Dreg. Well, I don't blame you for not recognizing me immediately. We Celts haven't really been active recently, and our legends aren't too well known to countries like Japan. Said Scathich with a cute smile, which made Issei blush. Well, that doesn't matter. Whether you're Scarlet Lancer or Scathich, you're still my master my extremely hot and sexy master. Reassured Issei with his goofy grin, Scathich blushed at this and smiled as well. But it was the kiss that surprised Issei, Scathich had quickly leaned in and connected their mouths. She quite literally shoved her tongue down Issei's throat, which he tried to resist, but in the end, she was in control this time. But Issei would not forget this, and he would definitely not be soft in bed. As their mouths had disconnected, Scathich giggled and stood up. I think we should go and swim now, the ocean cannot be ignored by any means. Said Scathich as she headed over to the beach, Issei who was still at bliss for a moment, stood up and followed his master. Soon enough they had arrived back at the beach, where Kateria and Vali were discussing some things, Arthur and Bhikkhu still racing, and Kuroka sipping on some juice. There was no sight of Mordred, but with Issei's enhanced eyes, he looked away a few miles from the beach, where he could see a small silhouette of Mordred diving in and out of the water, she was incredibly far away. Scathich went over to Kuroka to go get some juice, Issei saw this and sighed, he then headed for the ocean, where he would try and catch up to Mordred. Kateria was going to try and talk to Issei, but when she went to talk to him, he was already on his way to Mordred. She sighed and simply sat at one of the stretchers, putting sunglasses on. Issei was swimming relatively fast, when he got a few miles away from the beach, he could see Arthur and Bhikkhu going around laps, not too far from him. But the beach was relatively far, he could however see Mordred a bit better, though it was still a small silhouette. Issei could have sworn he saw a shark's fin around her. Soon enough, Issei had gotten close to Mordred, she was looking around, but stopped when she saw Issei. Oh, Issei. Called out Mordred, waving her arm. Issei waved back, but soon narrowed his eyes when he felt a presence behind him. When he turned around he saw a great white shark about to chew him into pieces, but Mordred suddenly appeared in front of the shark and slammed it back down into the ocean. The shark sunk down quickly, Mordred dived in after it, and a wrestling match between Mordred and the shark would begin. Issei sighed and dived in to get a look at their fight. Mordred had a wide grin on her face as she grabbed onto the shark's fin, and the shark attempted to shake her off by doing barrel rolls and twirling around. Issei was certainly impressed by the shark's intelligence, but unfortunately it couldn't match up to the thousand-year-old Knight of Camelot. The shark kept trying to bite Mordred, making it look like a dog chasing its own tail. But the shark eventually stopped and began ascending to the surface, Mordred still grinning like a maniac. Issei moved quickly to dodge the shark as it went past him and jumped up into the sky, Mordred laughed hysterically before they splashed back into the ocean where Mordred's grip on the shark was broken, and it immediately went to try and devour her. She quickly dodged the shark's charge and grabbed its tail, spinning it around for a few seconds before letting it go, causing it to come crashing into the seafloor. The shark shook around recovering from the blow and headed for Mordred again, she grinned and charged straight at the shark. Issei was sweat dropping from the fight, the night of treachery versus a great white shark. Ridiculous. You're seeing this, right Drag? Asked Issei in his thoughts. The shark attempted to bite Mordred once again, but she responded by holding his jaws open, the shark shook violently at her grip, but she wouldn't let go easily. You mean the silly fight? Yes, I am. Replied Drag, much to Issei's agreement. It was indeed a silly fight, but it certainly wasn't boring. This is gonna take forever thought Issei as he watched the shark shake free from Mordred's grip and slap her with its tail as it swam away. Mordred's face turned red from embarrassment and went to chase the shark, Issei decided he had enough and returned to the beach. Midnight. The group was now standing outside of some abandoned manor, the manager of the resort had told them about the haunted place, and Issei and Bhikkhu were certainly thrilled by it. Mordred was also excited to explore the manor, but Kuroka and Kateria were slightly hesitant. Eventually Issei was able to persuade them to come. They decided that they would come in one by one, and they would all meet behind the manor once they were finished exploring. The first to go in was Arthur, all of them were given flashlights, even though some of them didn't need it. 
Arthur turned on his flashlight as he ventured into the manor. After a few minutes, Bali came in next, followed by Kuroka, and then followed by Biku. The only ones left outside were Issei and what could honestly be considered as harem. The next to come in was Skathage, followed by Kateria. Soon after the two had entered, Mordred followed suit, and Issei was outside grinning. While most would consider Issei the gentleman type, he certainly had a side to him that wanted to impress the girls. He would use this chance to look like a hero saving the girls from the horrors within this manner, besides there wasn't anything actually in their right. Haha. Ha. Those brats are gonna wet their damn pants. Laughed one of the resort's employees as he took a look at the costume worn by another one of the employees. It looked like an exact replica of Ghostface from the movie, Scream. Are you sure we should be doing this to the guests? Asked a female employee conflicted. Relax, it's just a prank after all. That's how most of society gets away with things these days. Replied the other employee. And so, the costumed employee had headed inside the abandoned manor. Arthur was walking one of the manor's hallways, it certainly looked old and abandoned. As he pointed his flashlight around, he heard the sound of the floor creaking behind him, as he turned around and pointed his flashlight that direction, he saw a masked man in a black robe wielding a knife. Arthur simply blinked and summoned Colliburn, pointing the holy sword at the man, the man then shrieked in horror and ran away dropping the toy knife. Bali who was looking around in disinterest, turned around when he heard the sound of someone screaming, he found that some pervert in a mask and a black robe was running towards him, still screaming. The white dragon emperor looked at the man slightly amused as the man ignored him and ran past him, headed towards the direction of the others. Hiroka who was slightly creeped out by the manor, pointed her flashlight around places, until she pointed it at the hallway in front of her to find a masked man with a black robe running at her, breathing heavily. She screamed in horror like a cat and fell to the ground, her scream echoing throughout the hallway. Iku rose an eyebrow at the sudden scream and turned around and flashed his flashlight, he saw what looked like the killer from that horror movie he watched some time ago running at him, he stepped back cautiously as the supposed killer ran past him. The employee was running for his life, he had messed with the wrong people. The man he had encountered had some sort of sword, they were probably gonna kill him now. Damn it. I need to get out of here. Thought the employee as he turned a corner and was running into a woman with purple reddish hair. The woman rose an eyebrow at him and summoned a crimson spear, he screamed at this and ran the opposite direction. Pateria who had heard the scream earlier was creeped out and slightly scared, while she was the descendant of the Leviathan, she was still a girl who could get freaked out. She pointed her flashlight in front of her to find a man who was dressed as a serial killer running at her. She screamed in a high-pitched voice, which was totally out of character for her. She fell to the ground scared, the man looked at her for a second before turning and running away again, but he didn't get far as a boy with brown hair and brown eyes was now in front of him. Who the hell are you? Demanded Issei as he narrowed his eyes at the sight of a man dressed as Ghostface. The man stopped and was about to respond until lightning suddenly crackled and the shadow of a demon with horns could be seen for a split second. The man screamed and ran the opposite direction of Issei, Issei rose an eyebrow at this and scratched his head in confusion. Mordred who was walking around the manor with her helmet on and a flashlight, was slightly freaked out by the screams, she had thought that this wasn't a real haunted place, but it seems that she could possibly be wrong. As she turned a corner, she saw a man dressed as a killer running straight at her, the man screamed as he saw her and was about to run the opposite direction. Mordred however began shaking in fear and screamed as she then summoned Clarent and charged it up. The man began running away as fast as he could, he thought he had just seen the devil, though he wasn't too far off. But before he could turn the corner, he was doomed for encountering Mordred. Clarent Blood Arthur. Shouted Mordred as she fired the beam with her eyes closed. The man saw this and fell to his knees, he stared at the beam with fear and shock in his eyes. He had tried to prank the wrong people. Just before the beam was about to collide with the man's frail body, Volley released his dividing gear wings and tapped Mordred from behind. Mordred slowly opened her eyes and looked at Volley before he then divided her beam until it was like a little flame. The flame touched the man's forehead and popped like a balloon, the man passed out after this. Mordred who was still shaking, opened her eyes slowly to see the man in the outfit passed out on the ground. She stopped shaking as she felt the presence of the white dragon emperor behind her, she turned around and pointed Clarent at his throat. You saw nothing. Stated Mordred, earning a slow nod from Volley. She put Clarent down and began walking away, Volley sighed and picked up the man who tried to scare them. Soon after that night, all memories of the employees about the event were erased, and they peacefully returned to HQ. And with the addition of the immortal witch to Issei's team, he would only become more powerful. Hi do residents. Things weren't so calming with the three biblical factions though, while the cow's brigade was having fun times at the resort, things were getting serious with the biblical factions. At the Hi do residence, the occult research club had moved in as ordered by Sirzich's Lucifer. 
As members of the Devil Society, Issei's peerage had to obey. All the servants of Issei were relatively quiet, save for the girl who called herself Eleonora Volteria, who had gone on a quest to look for Issei, but has been returning every now and then. Rias was massaging her temples as she was stressed out on how to cheer up Issei's peerage, it helped that Kuroka wasn't here though, that would just be a burden for her and Kaneko. The only members who even remotely talked were the Phoenix girls, or the ones that stayed at least. The group was relatively surprised to find the Chaos Karma Dragon here, or at least the ones who didn't know about her. Sona visited every now and then to check up on both groups. Marion and Yubaluna would speak and serve tea to everyone every morning, they were improving their moods. Nashatania still barely talked to anybody and would usually go training outside, cursing the Leviathan bloodline. Donnie and Tiamat were pretty neutral, Donnie trying to socialize a bit more. Right now, the governor of the Fallen Angels, Azizel was checking up on the group of devils. Riaz greeted him and offered him a seat over at the couch around a coffee table. So, how are things? Asked Azizel with his usual grin. Riaz sighed and sipped on her tea. Not well, the girls are still torn up on Issei. Especially Issei's sister. Replied Riaz putting down her cup of tea. Oh, and what about you? Asked Azizel with a knowing grin. I'm afraid I don't follow. Said Riaz with a raised eyebrow. Azizel chuckled and drank some sake that he brought along with him. I know you had some feelings for the boy, same with Leviathan's sister. Said Azizel, causing a blush to form on Ria's face. I it doesn't matter, he's an enemy now. Argued Ria's hiding her face with her cup of tea. True, but he could come back any time. He's probably just hanging around the cow's brigade to see how much fun he can have. Shrugged Azizel as he drank more sake. I know, that's probably the only reason that my peerage, Sona, her peerage, and I haven't broken down crying like Seraphol Leviathan. Sighed Rias, a small frown forming on her face. Well, let's move on to another topic. You'll be headed off to the underworld soon for your summer break, right? Asked Azizel curiously. Rias nodded at this. Good, make sure Hideu's servants are ready for the trip as well. I don't want to be in the same train as some gloomy servants who can't get over the fact that their master has left them for his fiancé said Azizel, angering Ria slightly. You can't blame them for being sad and depressed. They just lost their master without warning. Argued Ria's, clutching her fists. Azizel looked at Ria's with dead serious eyes before sighing. Look, I'm sure they all had knowledge of Issei being the Seker Yuite and being enchanted by Kateria Leviathan. So naturally, they should have been prepared for Issei to eventually join the descendant brat. Said Azizel, causing Ria's jaw to hang wide open, at a loss for words, soon enough she calmed down and sighed. Azizel had a point there. Well, whatever. We'll try our best to cheer them up and get them ready, I assume they'll be attending the young devil's gathering. Inquired Riaz, earning a nod from Azizel. Issei, the knight and the Nekamata will probably show up. And they won't be allies, so be prepared to fight him as well. Said Azizel with a serious tone before disappearing in a magic circle. Riaz sighed and headed off to try and improve the spirits of Issei Hyde's peerage. Theme Issei HQ. Skathich, Mordred and Issei arrived in the official team Issei HQ as dubbed by Issei himself, soon after they had returned to base after their small vacation. With their numbers increased to three, fixing the furniture and placing magic barriers was a piece of cake, especially since Skathich was incredibly experienced with runes. She had also placed portals around the HQ which led to the Land of Shadows, Skathich's home. After everything had been set in place, Issei sat down on the couch in the main living room, he exhaled loudly as he slumped down on the sofa, clearly tired. Mordred who was in the opposite side, also slumped down on the sofa with her feet on the coffee table in front of her. Skathich had went to the Land of Shadows to go and get her luggage, as all members of Team Issei would be living here. Although she will still rule over the Land of Shadows, she just hoped none of the Celtic gods would notice her absence in the Land of Shadows, specifically Morgan. Mordred and Issei were sitting beside each other as they watched a TV show centered around Merlin, Mordred was a bit uncomfortable as it portrayed her as a male, but the legends of King Arthur weren't all that specific, and she hid the fact that she was female after all. As they were watching, a magic circle appeared revealing Kateria Leviathan. Mordred glanced at her and continued watching the show, while Issei stood up and headed over to his lover. What's up? Greeted Issei, curious as to why his lover was here, with a few papers in her hand. Kateria gestured for them to go into Issei's room, Issei obliged and led her to his room. Once they were at Issei's room, Kateria gave two documents to Issei. He took them and began reading the details. From what he could gather, the reports were about a demonic creature experimenting on humans, and a powerful lick who happens to be pretty neutral. So why are you giving these to me? Asked Issei with a raised eyebrow, Kateria smiled and crossed her arms just below her breasts, causing them to slightly jiggle. I thought that they would be good assets for your team, especially the Lick, having someone like him in our cow's brigade would be very beneficial. 
Issei sat down on his bed and entered his thoughts. What do you think, Drake? Asked Issei curiously. The dragon snorted and quickly read the document about the two potential candidates for Team Issei. The lick might be a valuable asset, but I can't exactly be sure about that demon. Replied Drake honestly, earning a nod of approval from Alsha. But Belzard seemed insistent on recruiting the demon. That demon might be useful, in the document it states that the demon has been experimenting on humans and even created a few homunculus. Spoke Belzard his thoughts on the matter, much to Elsha's confusion. So what if he can create homunculus? I'm sure with enough effort even Issei could do something like that. Said Elsha, earning a grin from Belzard, which wasn't a good sign. It means that the demon is probably a scientist or something, and let's be honest here, Team Issei doesn't have a lot of particularly smart people. Replied Belzard, causing Alsha to look at him dumbfounded. Issei has been listening intently to the beings inside of him, and he found himself agreeing to Belzard. They needed someone who had brains in their team, he had decided that he would recruit both the demon scientist and the lick. He then returned to reality to find a confused Kateria Leviathan staring at him up close, as Issei's eyes opened, Kateria backed away cutely. Issei chuckled at the display and stood up. I've decided that I'll recruit both of them, thank you, Kateria-chan. Thanked Issei as he left the room, leaving a blushing Kateria Leviathan to herself. Issei arrived at the main room to see that Skathich had returned from her venture, and she had already put her luggage in her room. They greeted each other before pausing the TV show that Mordred was watching. Hey! Shouted Mordred annoyed that they paused her show while she was at the good part. Issei put on a serious face as he pulled out a queen chess piece and a knight from his pocket. We're about to go on a mission to recruit new members for Team Issei but before that. Said Issei as he smiled at the shocked faces that Mordred and Skathich had after seeing the evil pieces. About damn time. Said Mordred with a wide grin as she happily took the knight piece from Issei, leaving only one candidate left for his queen piece. Sensei, I know that you probably like the way you are right now, and if you reject my offer then I completely understand Tha. Of course I'll become your queen, Issei Kun. Interrupted Skathich as she took the queen piece, Issei looked at her surprise before he smiled happily. Thank you. Thank to say as he then proceeded with the ritual in order to make Mordred and Skathich his servants. Hi to residents. Nashatania was training outside the house per usual, but she suddenly stopped abruptly, surprising Kiba who was watching her train. She didn't mind the presence of another knight, in fact she kind of liked the fact that another knight was interested in her technique. What's the matter, Nashatania-san? Asked Kiba slightly worried. Nashatania glanced at him before dematerializing her sword. I felt my brother's peerage expand, someone took in the queen piece and the remaining knight piece. Replied Nashatania, shocking Kiba. Before any of the two could continue talking, someone appeared through a blue magic circle. I have returned. Announced Leonora Volteria, causing Nashatania to smile. Welcome back, have you found Issei? Asked Nashatania hopeful. Indeed. It has come to my attention that Issei has established his HQ somewhere in Norway. Replied Leonora as she held a map to Norway. Kiba was surprised by Issei's bold choice of venue. Right inside enemy territory, can Issei fight the Norse gods all alone if they discover his HQ? Asked Kiba curiously, Nashatania and Leonora smiled at him. I should probably tell you that office itself dubbed Issei the top five strongest in the world. Replied Nashatania with a proud grin, shocking Kiba. Top five that means he's higher than Serzich Sama. Blurted out Kiba in utter shock, Nashatania laughed at Kiba's display and simply walked back inside the house, Leonora did so as well. So you're telling me that you can somehow project a picture of my brother's entire peerage? Inquired Nashatania with a raised eyebrow. The governor of the fallen angels chuckled and nodded. Exactly, with this device I designed I just need to connect it with one of Issei's evil pieces and it should be able to project the image. Confirmed Azazel with a grin, Eleonora had been listening intently and had hoped that the one who took the queen piece was not who she was thinking it was. I don't see why we need to go through all this trouble to find out who Issei's new pieces are, I mean it should be obvious who his queen is right. Inquired Akeno with a confused expression, earning a nod of agreement from her fellow peerage. Akeno has a point, his queen is most likely Kateria Leviathan. Agreed Riaz, along with the rest of her peerage. Issei's peerage agreed as well, but it seems that Eleonora had a different theory. Um, you look like you know something we don't care to spill. Called out Azazel as he noticed the conflicted expression of Eleonora. She was a little surprised at being called out, but she shook her head in denial. Alright then, well let's just take a look just in case. Shrugged Azazel as he connected the device with Nashatania's night piece. The device beeped, and it seemed to be scanning the evil piece, after a few minutes however, the device disconnected from the evil piece, and it seemed like an image was forming on top of it. The image was blurry, but after a few seconds the image became clear, and all members of Issei's peerage could be seen. 
And thus the two new peerage members of Issei Haidu had been revealed. So it wasn't Kateria Leviathan blurted out Akeno slightly embarrassed. Who are those two women though? Asked Caddis confused as she stared at the two new members of Issei's peerage. That blonde girl in armor is the one that attacked Zenobia San. Recognized Asia Argento as she looked at the grinning blonde carefully. The others soon recognized the knight as well. MMM, and that leaves us with one question. Who is the queen? Said Azazel as he looked at Issei's peerage, impressed. He, he practically has a harem though. I'm impressed, Issei. Thought Azazel proud of the boy he had learned to call his friend. Wait a minute. That's one of the former teachers in our school. Recognized Murayama as she looked at the woman with purple reddish hair. Riaz and the others immediately remembered the teacher who disappeared without trace soon after she was employed. So they know Scarlet Lancer, I guess she enrolled in Issei's school to try and get close to him. Thought Leonora, irritated at her former friend. That's Issei's master, although I suppose their roles have switched. Spoke Nashatania as she recognized the purple-haired woman. But we don't have a clue as to what she can do said Marion as she sighed. Well, now we know who his new servants are. Quite impressive. Said Azazel holding his chin. Is it just a coincidence that all of his servants are beautiful women? Asked Kiba jokingly. The girls giggled at Kiba's joke, while Donnie was pouting as she was once a man. Ah, that reminds me. How are you liking the gender swap? Asked Azazel as he looked over to Donnie, her eyes immediately widened in shock as everyone looked over to her curiously. Gender swap. Repeated Kaneko confused. Azazel laughed at the question, while Donnie simply glared at him. I used a gender swapping gun on her, she was the first male in Issei's peerage. Explained Azazel, causing Donnie to shake in embarrassment. Marion was holding in a burst of laughter, while Nashatania was openly giggling. Ayaze Aziel. Brum. It was currently night time and a young man that had black hair with a tint of white was walking through the dark streets with his hands in his pockets. He had modern day earphones on and was listening to what kids these days consider edgy music. While he was walking however he sensed that he was being watched by someone and he only hoped that it wasn't a woman. He narrowed his eyes and glanced behind him before turning a corner and ending up in a dark alleyway. The cliché place for a murder thought the young man as he looked around him, when he turned around a figure landed on the ground. When he looked closely he could see that it was a woman, her crimson eyes glowing in the dark. Look, I don't want any trouble. Said the young man as he raised his arms up defensively. The woman giggled and pointed what looked like a spear at him. Neither do I, come with me quietly and maybe we can settle this peacefully. Said the woman, the man narrowed his eyes and quickly shook his head. Sorry, but I'll have to refuse. I don't plan on getting used by anyone ever again. Declined the young man, the woman smirked and her spear began emitting massive amounts of bloodthirst. The young man saw this and grit his teeth as the skin in his body began fading away, the woman was surprised by this, but she raised her guard, just in case the man was up to something terrible. As all of the skin in his body faded away, he rose his head, revealing a skull with sharper points than a normal human skull. And small red dots which the woman assumed would work as his eyes. So you are a lick after all. Spoke the woman as she raised her spear. The lick placed his phone on the ground and put it on the highest volume before playing one of his favorite songs. A.N. Psychosocial by Slipknot. The song began booming loudly, the woman rose an eyebrow at this, but simply maintained her fighting stance. The lick was shaking his head back and forth slightly as the song played, and small flickers of lightning could be seen from his skeletal hands. Oh yeah. Jane Dragon Lightning. Said the lick as the powerful magic spell activated and was narrowly dodged by the woman, she leaped up, and a loud boom sound was heard as her spear began glowing a deadly crimson, and she levitated in the sky. They chanted the woman, the lick's eyes glowed before he raised his arm forward, and it began glowing green. I did my time. And I want out, so effusive, fate. The doesnt cut, the soul is not so vibrant. Bolg. Shouted the woman as she threw her spear, the spear was approaching the lick at incredible speeds, but he would not let it strike him. Protection from arrows. Said the lick as a green globe now surrounded him, protecting him from the spear which was now colliding with his magical shield. The reckoning. The sickening. Packaging subversion. Suedo sacrosync perversion. The woman grit her teeth as she landed on the ground, watching her spear collide with the shield the lick had put up. She summoned another spear and aimed it at the shield. A bulk alternative. Shouted the woman as she threw yet another spear, but this one had much more precision and speed than the last one she threw. The spear collided with the shield and it was visibly cracking. And the rain will kill you us all, we throw ourselves against the wall. But no one else can see, the preservation of the martyr in me. Greater teleportation. Chanted the lick as he disappeared from inside the magical shield just before it broke, and the spears came crashing into the ground, creating a massive explosion. The cops would surely come now. Psychosocial. The lick was in the sky, just above the woman. 
He was slightly chuckling evilly as he aimed his hand directly at the woman below him. Brass Pigua grunted the lick as he narrowly dodged a blow from the powerful sword which was swung at him by a beautiful blonde woman with strong-looking armor. She was visibly grinning as she glanced at him and began swinging her sword at him. Teleportation. Said the lick as he once again disappeared, and the blonde woman looked around for him to see that he was in front of the spear woman once again. Psychosocial. Sorry, almost left my phone. Apologized the lick as he once again teleported, narrowly dodging another spear. As he teleported away, he found himself being chased by the two women. Why must women be so persistent? Thought the lick as he stopped flying away and chanted another spell. Summon undead, death knight. Chanted the lick as a figure began forming, and a skeletal knight was now in front of him. He nodded his head and chanted another spell. Summon undead, vampire leech. Chanted the lick as an ugly vampire with a mouth that could be compared to a lamp reappeared. He ordered both of the summoned undead to attack the two women chasing him. The undead charged forward and surprised the two women and soon clashed with them, the lick took this chance to escape. The limits of the dead. As the lick had gotten quite the distance away from the women, he could sense that his undead had been defeated already, so he began to summon a magic circle to leave. But he suddenly turned around abruptly as he felt another presence. Seriously what do these people want at least this one is a man thought the lick as he slowly backed away, and he prepared multiple magic spells. The man with brown hair and brown eyes in front of him was chuckling as he saw him back away. Don't worry, I don't want to kill you. Reassured the brown haired man. The lick's eyes glowed and he simply stared at the man. My name is Issei Haidu. Greeted Issei with a smile. The lick silently buffed himself up as he felt the immense power the man in front of him had. Magic protection chanted the lick silently, Issei who still had his smile started walking towards the lick. Greater hardening chanted the lick. Do you have a name? Asked Issei curiously. The lick was hesitant, but he nodded. What do you people want from me? Asked the lick confused. We want to recruit you into our team. Replied Issei bluntly, the lick narrowed his crimson eyes in suspicion. What team? Asked the lick. Uh, how do I say this our team is called Team Issei? Answered Issei embarrassed. The lick stared at the man for a few seconds before laughing out loud, his voice was deep and held no emotion, so it would have sounded like an evil laugh if Issei didn't know better. Uh -huh, and why do you want to recruit me into this team of yours? Asked the lick curiously. I believe the fact that you're still alive is good enough a reason to recruit you. Replied Issei with a grin. What do you mean? Asked the lick confused. You had two of the most powerful women I know chase you down, and here you are, still alive. Hell, you could probably beat them if you tried hard enough. Clarified Issei. The lick stood there silently, considering the offer. Issei crossed his arms as he waited for an answer, soon enough, the lick looked up, and his eyes glowed as he stared directly at Issei. Issei however, stared back with his confident grin. I'll need more details, like what is the goal of this team? Asked the lick, Issei nodded and was about to answer until two figures landed behind him. Scathich and Mordred had arrived. The lick raised his guard and he backed up slightly, but Issei raised his arm, calling them off. The two immediately understood that the two men had already discussed the offer. Our goal is simply to expand the team, essentially become family, all the while serving the cow's brigade. Answered Issei, but the lick had more questions. Cow's brigade certainly doesn't sound like a peaceful organization. But that doesn't matter to me, what does matter is this single question said the lick, causing Issei to listen closely. Why should I join your team? Asked the lick with a serious aura surrounding him. I can definitely beat one or two of you, so why should I yield? Asked the lick as he summoned a scythe, causing Mordred and Scathich to glare at him. But the two were surprised to see that Issei still had his confident grin. You seem quite experienced with magic. Complimented Issei, about to bring up a point before being interrupted. Oh, you think? said the lick sarcastically, annoying Scathich and amusing Mordred. But you aren't at your peak yet, and I also happen to know about the conflict within your soul. I can help you get through your fears. Continued Issei, surprising the lick. The lick stared at Issei, checking if his eyes held any amount of deceit. But he found none, Issei truly wanted to help him. If he would give him one chance, he hoped that in the end, he wouldn't have to go through all of that again. Very well, I'll give it a shot. But if I don't like how this whole thing rolls, I'm out said the lick, causing Issei to smile. Issei walked up to him and offered his hand, which the lick hesitantly took. You still haven't told me your name. Said Issei, the lick chuckled at this. He let out a dark aura and took the stance that an overlord or emperor would take. My name is Valdis. This is a name that you will never forget. Introduced Valdis, seeing this, Issei now believed that Valdis had an incredibly high charisma level, as he could make an entire guild bow down to him if he willed it. Unknown realm. Nah, so what did Loki-kun say? Asked a devil with a wide smile as he sipped on some wine. 
The Norse god Loki will comply for now, it seems he truly is at a disagreement with Odin's desire to aid the three biblical factions. Replied another devil, although he had a much more calming aura. Um, with Loki Kun, Vali Kun and Issei Kun at our side now, there's almost no chance of our mission ending up in failure. Wouldn't you say, Euclid San? Inquired the devil with identical armor to the current Mayu, Serzich's Lucifer. It is as you say, Lucifer Sama. Agreed Euclid Lucifuge, younger brother of Grafia Lucifuge. Oh, that young devil's gathering is starting soon, right? I hope Loki Kun can provide some fine entertainment. Exclaimed Lucifer excitedly. I almost forgot to report to you that one of the evil dragons, Krom Kruich, has been ignoring orders to stand by and has been exploring the world rather frequently. There are also rumors of his desire to join Issei Haidu's team, which he is still forming. Informed Euclid, much to Lucifer's curiosity. The strongest evil dragon wants to ally himself with the strongest Sekiryute. Ha ha ha, what an unexpected turn. Laughed Lucifer as he then drank some more wine. What shall we do with him, Lucifer Sama? Asked Euclid, awaiting orders. Nothing, let him do as he pleases. I'm sure his dragon's pride will force him to aid us when we need him, oh, and I thought I told you to just call me by my first name inquired Lucifer with a raised eyebrow. My apologies, Rizavam Sama. Apologized Euclid with a smile. Sure, we'll come with you. Agreed Nashatania as Rhea's Gremory offered them a ride in the Gremory train so that they can attend the upcoming Young Devil's gathering, Rhea's was surprised when she had agreed, expecting some form of resistance. That's great. We we'll leave by the afternoon, so please prepare yourselves. Said Rhea's, getting a nod from Nashatania. Soon after that, Rias and Akeno returned to their rooms, while Nashatania and the other members of Issei's peerage simply sat at the living room in silence. I think I know what's going on with this unexpected silence. Spoke Dani as she rose an arm, all the others looked at her with raised eyebrows. You're all worried that Issei will crash the party. Said Dani with an as-a-matter-of-fact tone. Tiamat snorted at this and walked out of the room, while the others simply sighed. Well you're not completely wrong, but there's also the fact that we might be forced to take sides said Yubaluna, crossing her arms. Donnie just looked at the fellow bishop confused. What she means is that if when Issei shows up, he'll probably offer to bring us with him or something. Clarified Marion, causing Donnie to look at her with a raised eyebrow. That shouldn't be hard, I mean since he is our master, then all of us should follow him, right? Inquired Donnie, well Tiamat would agree with her, Nashatania and the others had some conflicts on which side they should take. I've been with the Devil's faction for the entirety of my life, I'm not sure if I can just throw that all away even for a say. Said Nashatania, getting Donnie to look at her with shock and confusion. But why? Isn't family more important to you? Asked Donnie confused. Nashatania glanced at her and soon closed her eyes before sighing. Issei is my little brother and I would do almost anything for him, but I'm not sure if I can throw away my loyalties for him. Replied Nashatania before walking out of the room. Donnie stared at her as she left, soon looking down at the ground, conflicted. Demis HQ. Meanwhile at Demis HQ, Mordred was slightly drunk and was trying to mess with their new recruit, Valdis. Hey, I told you to stop. Exclaimed Valdis who was in his lick form, trying to escape the grasp of the Knight of Treachery. Haha, <laughs> don't worry. It ain't gonna hurt. Reassured Mordred as she tried to ride on top of him. Mordred, that's enough. Said Issei who had just arrived with some tempura, Mordred pouted after hearing this and sat back down. You need to control your women better, I know better than anyone how deceiving they can be. Spoke Valdis as he crossed his arms and walked out of the room. Issei sighed and simply began eating his beloved tempura. Mordred rose an eyebrow at Valdis as he left, but she paid it no heed. She turned to look at Issei who seemed to be studying some magical layout of a place she didn't know about while devouring his precious tempura. What are you looking at? Asked Mordred curiously. Issei glanced at her before returning his eyes focus on the layout. It's a projected hologram of the venue for the young devil's gathering. Replied Issei, taking a bite out of his prawn. Oh, we're attacking today right? Asked Mordred excitedly. Issei nodded and this left Mordred twitching in excitement. Yosh. I can finally show those devils the power of the true king of Britain. Cheered Mordred, raising a fist up in excitement. It'll only be you, me, Kuroka and Biku. We're only serving as a small distraction. Informed Issei, turning the layout around. Mordred formed a scowl after this, she was looking forward to fighting with a big audience. Don't worry, if Loki needs any assistance then we will provide it. Reassured Issei, causing Mordred to smile and hug Issei Tylee, the servant of Leviathan squirming in her tight grip. How rude, you should just go back to whatever kingdom you crawled out of. Mocked Kateria who had finished materializing from her magic circle. Mordred made a TSK sound as she then got off of Issei and turned to Kateria with a small scowl, which Kateria gladly returned. 
Issei sighed and stood up, gesturing for Kateria to follow him into his room, which she gladly obliged. Seriously, you girls need to calm down and talk with one another. I don't want to harem if all of my girls will be at each other's throats. Spoke Issei as he put an arm on his waist. Kateria smiled and tackled him down on his bed. Then don't have a harem then I'm totally fine with keeping you all to myself. Whispered Kateria, causing Issei to blush. Kateria giggled at this and stood up, and soon after, Issei did as well. Now, I need to ask if you've been approached by any weird people recently. Said Kateria with a serious expression. Issei rose an eyebrow and simply shook his head. The fine weird people said Issei as he crossed his arms. Well when I say weird people, I mean a menacing jet black western dragon. Clarified Kateria as she stared at Issei, looking for any signs of a reaction. Issei held his chin, presumably in deep thought. Nope. Haven't seen any of those recently. Stated Issei, causing Kateria to sigh and rub her temples. Well be careful, I hear the crescent circle dragon is very interested in you. Warned Kateria seriously. In what way? Asked Issei curiously, with a small cheeky grin. Kateria pouted at this and karate chopped Issei's head in a comedic way, causing him to stagger back in pain. What the hell? Exclaimed Issei holding his head as he rolled around his bed. You're so hopeless, Issei kun. Sighed Kateria as she prepared a magic circle to leave. Prom Kruich is a male dragon, so I doubt he's actually into you, but he's certainly interested due to you basically being a heavenly dragon. Informed Kateria as she dematerialized in the magic circle. That's just great. Shouted Issei sarcastically. End of the year. So that's it for today's video guys, before you go just like the video and share it with your friends. Bye.